All right, everybody, this is your boy Trey with Let's Just Talk Fitness, and I'm back again with an amazing interview, man. Um, again, we just chopped it up. Uh, my guy, Aaron, we've been planning this interview, I would say, probably for the past three months, right? Was it, we said about three. About three months, man. Like yeah, about beginning of March, yeah. About the beginning of March. And, and, and the thing is, I feel bad because I'm like, man, I had all these other people on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like n- n- no disrespect to the other people who I've already interviewed, you know, from March, but like, yeah, y'all shouldn't have come before my guy. Like, 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 <laughs> like, like, like I'm, I'm literally backtracking and trying to rectify all the interviews that I was supposed to get when I actually got scared. If, I don't know if you guys knew that, but I actually at one point got really scared and just stopped doing interviews. But Aaron was definitely one of the, the, the people I was supposed to bring on here and actually uh, share their story with. So today is that day. But before we get into Aaron and who he is and about him, man, because he's an amazing guy, make sure that you like, follow, share this video, comment below. Um, if you have any questions or you want to share your own story, DM me. Hit me up and let me capture your story and your journey, just like Aaron is doing here um, today. Uh, but with that said, man, let's hop right on into it. Aaron, bro, how are you doing, man? Hot but good. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you keep making me feel bad, man. Bro, you got to tell them. You got to tell them why. You're no, like, it's a, bro. It's a, it's a cool day. So I'm in South Texas right now working, and it's usually between 110 to 120 degrees. It's 102 right now. But it's cool. It's a cool day. Cooler later at night. Yeah. We're good. I'm just messing with Trey. Yeah, man. Yeah, this guy got me feeling bad, bro. I'm like, 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 I'm, I, I want to speed up the interview, but like, y'all see any smoke? Y'all see any smoke over there, man? Look, it's it's not it's not me. It's, I didn't do that. <laughs> but bro, let's get right on into it, man. Um, you're you're in Texas now, but were you always in Texas? Are you born from? Are you from Texas? Were you born in Texas? Where'd you grow up? Um, a little bit about your childhood, man. If you could just kind of share with us. Where, where you grew up and, and, and how that has affected where you are today. Yeah. So I was actually born in Florida. Um, I come mm. from a military family. Sorry, my phone's getting hot. I got to move. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. Uh, so I was born in Florida, Tampa, Florida. I grew up in a military family. So I grew up all over the world, but my family is from Texas. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, I mean, I've lived in, obviously, Florida, Texas, New Mexico, Japan, Germany. Oh. And then when I was in the military, I got to go to Korea. And, uh, and then I was stationed in the Georgia and Texas. Mm. Bro. Wait, wait, wait. So you're from a military family. It's not just you that went to the military. You're saying this is generational. Ooh, I think it cut out. All right, man. So a little technical difficulties there, but uh, no biggie. With that said, man, um, I wanted to go into the first question of, again, where are you from, your childhood, and, and where, you, where, you, where you born? And where did you spend most of your time in terms of your childhood and your upbringing? Um, so just a little bit about that, man. So I was born in Florida. Um, I come from a military family. Uh, my dad was in the military retired in 2019 so um but most of my family's from texas which is why when i got out of the military i moved back to texas where i didn't yeah. move i stayed in texas wow. um but i've lived in florida new mexico texas virginia japan germany um, and then when i was in the military i was stationed in fort benning georgia uh, fort hood texas and camp casey korea bro 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 I- I have to ask this, man. I have to go. I have to go straight to this because I've always wanted to do this, and again, I still want to do this. And that is Japan. What was it like living in Japan? And how old were you? How old were you when you were doing? Like, were uh, you? Yeah. I was eight. Wow. Eight to thirteen. Mm. So old enough to understand what was going on, mm. but uh, young enough to not appreciate it as much as I should have. Mm. but japan's uh it's awesome it's the, the americans are very loud and most people don't know that until they leave the country and japan, yeah. japanese are very quiet they don't even with their arguments they're very secretive or quiet they don't they don't like loud noises they don't like uh, loud people um, you can definitely pick out americans 
or uh, English or Australian people, mostly, you know, colonies that start out with majority white, you can pick them out real mm. fast, quick, in a hurry. Other countries are very quiet. They like to keep, their, uh, keep themselves, their, <laughs> their business out there, unlike us Americans. Uh, I was 12 years old when I realized that. We were on a flight back to Texas to see my grandmother and my grandfather. Yeah sitting on the plane there was a bunch of uh sailors and airmen on the plane with us this was just a commercial flight they were just going home for the holidays mm-hmm. didn't realize how loud they were <laughs> i was sitting next to a, a nice a nice japanese family on one side and then across the hall is a nice um bunch of sailors and airmen and they were just screaming and loud and drinking and having a good time and these japanese families are like oh these americans are so loud <laughs> food's great people are great i i, I wish i would have take the time to uh appreciate yeah. japan more bro that is amazing and, and, and going back to just what you stated just then you you were old enough to know what was going on did that did that in any sense and i asked this to all of the people i've had i think three people i've interviewed who've been in the military this question i ask is were you in any way resentful for all of the moving and all of the friendships maybe that you developed and then you had to leave uh, one one girl that i actually had on here um K- kaylina if you've seen some of her snippets she stated how she got used to just up and leaving people it, it became like a sense yeah. of yeah numbness did you experience any of that bro uh of course um mm, wow. of course i did when you know you move every couple of years you the good thing about today's age, you got social media. So yeah. by the time I hit middle school, there's MySpace at the time. I know I'm a little older. Mm. <laughs> um, and then by the time I was graduating high school, there was Facebook, and, and now there's like Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. So it, it sucks as a as a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but now I can go see any of my old friends, my old buddies, and we can chop it up like I was just with them yesterday instead of wow. 15, 10 years ago. Wow. I, I do think that I've, I'm numb to moving. I'm still numb to moving. Um, I was active and now I'm in the guard and went back to what I consider my hometown. Even, yeah. even though that's not where I was born. It's kind of where I was raised almost every summer and Christmas, mm. my whole childhood. Um, I'm ready to leave. Yeah. Ready to move again. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I love my grandparents. Um, a lot of the friends I used to have when I was in high school and then in middle school don't live there anymore. Yeah grateful i moved back i met my wife but i'm i'm ready to move ready for a new town new image new friends so i get that aspect um that's definitely it i was very resentful moving when i was older mm. but but that's because i didn't understand my dad my dad was deployed three of the four years when i was in high school mm. i think the only year he was actually there was 290 days between my sophomore year and my junior year. He wow. missed, uh, you know, my senior year. He missed my freshman year. Uh, not that it was his fault. But I didn't understand yeah. his lifestyle until mm-hmm. I joined the army. And then, you know, we understand more when you have kids. Mm-hmm. I have my oldest son, and he started doing stuff that I did to my dad. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm no. so sorry. I was such a bad kid. <laughs> Bro. Oh, my, my dad just laughed. No. Bro, bro, bro. I, I love that. And, and again, you being able to now reflect back on what your dad was doing because you now experience it. That that is that is that that, that right there, that's an ironic situation to be in. If you don't mind me asking, because I got curious as soon as you said it, and you've told me this, what made you you told me that you went into the military. Um, but what made you go into the military? Was it just your dad solely? You know what I'm saying? Was it, was it? Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What was it? What? Yeah. So I didn't, like I said, I didn't understand my dad in high school and even in college. Mm-hmm. I failed out of two different colleges. Um, mm-hmm. I went to TJC, Tyler Junior College. Failed out my second semester. Um, I get kicked off the football team for being hurt. Mm-hmm. And I moved to Virginia and went to Thomas Nelson Community College. And I just didn't. Fall semester was great. Straight A's, spring hit around, and I just yeah. didn't care. Yeah. So I started to party a lot, um, drink. I was addicted to pain meds, and I was um, 
drive into work, which I used to work at Dollar General, mm. and I was an assistant football coach at a high school. And I just seen a, a recruitment sign for Marines. Mm. I am drinking and driving, mm. or drunk and driving, um, and I just hear my dad yelling in my face like he did when I was little, get my life together. So I uh, called my boss at the time. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be a little late. I got to make a meeting. Stop to, to meet with some guys. Um, he thought I was doing a drug deal or something mm-hmm. because I was never sober. Mm-hmm. Went to the Marines first, uh, took their ass back, and then took a little bit. But they told me I was going to you know, take six months. So I went to the Air Force. Um, you know, easier living, same pay, just easier lifestyle. They spend their money differently than yeah. other branches do. They told me 400 some days, a year plus. Wow. Uh, I walked with the Navy. Um, I gave them the test scores I already taken with Marines. They told me six months. Wow. I walked into the Army recruiters. Before he even could start talking about the Army, I said, what's the fastest you can get me to basic training? Yeah. At any job. I said, so, man, I don't care. I just need yeah. to get out. I'm either going to be dead or in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Help me get my life together. Um, we are two weeks. Sign the papers. Send you the memp. Make sure you can pass the physical. Make sure you're not gang related. If you're not sober, let's get yeah. you sober. Mm. My first sober night in two years was actually the day I went to MEPS before I shipped out the basic training on February 23rd, 2014, uh-huh. which was a struggle. Mm. Um, but Another struggle was telling my dad I was joining the army. Mm. Uh, I was probably the, the first time he had actually told me he was proud of me that I actually believed him. Wow. Wow. So the second second time was when I graduated basic training. But I mean, yeah, that's I was in a kid that was going downhill fast. Yeah. He did a way out. Military, you know, there's a lot of stipulations about the military and drinking. Mm. Oh, I still today don't drink a lot. Don't. Wow. take medicine unless a doctor wow. tells me oh yeah yeah bro that is that is dope man i love again just to jump into this right quick this is why i do what i do <laughs> people see your tiktoks people see your instagrams but they don't see they don't hear this this is a mate this is this is golden when it comes to interviewing as an interviewer you know you've caught something when when that trend that transparency that you just shared is starting to bleed out early we just started the interview <laughs> and yeah, it's bleeding out bro like i appreciate that because again th- these are things that people are going through now you have you have young guys yeah. you know, just like you who are going through these things now so again when i when i go through these things i i, I keep that in mind now i do want to focus a little bit back on on, on the relationship with you and your father if you don't mind me asking uh again uh, if, yeah, if yeah if it's too personal you can definitely not answer and just say so uh, but I, I definitely have to go back to that because I, I believe a father and son relationship is something that is um, invaluable. So oh, yeah. with with that said, bro, did you ever let your father know or did you ever in some sense reconcile that resentment that you had with him for not being with you or there with you through those years? I know you said you, you gained understanding by having a son and things of that nature, but were you ever able to sit down and talk to him about how you felt? Yeah. Um... Mm. So I went home on leave after I graduated basic and, and went through my initial training. Um, I went home um, and they lived in Virginia at the time. So I wasn't really home, but I was going to see them. Mm. Had some stuff of mine. And I went through my dad's called, what's called my love me book. And it's his awards, his accomplishments. And mind you, he's already been in 27 years at the time. He was in the Persian Gulf, his initial invasion. Wow. Iraq. So, uh, I can go on and on about his deployment. Wow. Um, which I didn't know until I went because I love me book again, which is awards, accomplishments, um, NCOERs, which are like progress reports, like yeah. yearly progress reports, how you're doing. And I knew my dad was awesome, but like, mm. you know, I had to go for four different three inch binders. And I'm like, yeah, that's an American hero. <laughs> Who is my dad? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I went through his book and obviously gained a massive amount of respect. And then every time I go to a different base, even still today, they go, you Mayfield's kid? Oh, wow. Rock. And I'm like, yep, that's my yeah. dad. You better live up to his name. You better live up to his name. He's the hardest worker I know. And I was like, man. Uh, but um, I think 
I think I actually had a sit down conversation with him. Yeah. When I named my first son after him. Mm. So his my my first son is Dawson Allen. My dad Brock Allen. So I didn't name him first name. My ex wife didn't like the first name Brock. So <laughs> I settled on Allen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. That's fine with me. <laughs> but uh, I told my dad that I found things I let me book, and I understood. Uh, when I went through basic training, uh, a little bit different than today's, not to take away from today's basic training, but I was told, you're going to Iraq, you're going to Afghanistan, mm. you're going to lose friends, or you might die. We're going to train you to do the best you can while you're over there. So I was trained by guys who had literally need help. They need um, mm. PTSD, mm. anxiety, depression, like, mm. but when they're in that training environment, they teach you, like, that switch flips, doesn't matter if your battle buddies left or right drop, that's the enemy, and you take out the enemy, mm. that's the military I grew up in, so I grew an appreciation for my dad that I didn't know was possible, still today, my dad's my hero, my dad's a superhero, I don't care what anybody says, wow. that's, I mean, um, I don't think he fully understands, I told him, but, you know, kid tells you at 30 yeah uh, yeah it's just because it's you feel bad because your son's doing the same things that you did to me you know yeah yeah i not understand it <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah no i mean my dad is besides my wife um my dad's my best friend i just want to tell everything to if i have to need advice military wise or thought wise or man to man wise mm. i call my dad um which isn't every day we don't talk every day but once or twice a week i'll give him a call they'll call me so yeah yeah Oh, bro, 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 bro. That, that is amazing. And to hear the, the progress by, with you, by which you both sifted through mending the relationship, again, to the point to where now today you can call him and still ask him about things that are going on in your life. That, 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 is, that, is, that is absolutely amazing, man, to hear that reconciliation. And again, I was hoping that that was the case. Um, but you really, yeah, I was, I was really hoping that because I know a lot of people can, can, can gain or gather resentment towards a parent, but that never really be expressed, you know, again, going back to Kaylina, yeah. you know, she was, she was one that, that, that had that. She told her mom, you know, and things of that nature about how she was going off to the military. Her mom didn't believe her until the day of, and she, I don't, I don't think to this day, I, I don't think she really ever really got that reconciliation. Um, but I'm glad that you were able to get that with your father. Would you say that that's something that, that you need it? Or do you feel like you could have probably still been the man you are today without it? Uh, hard to say. I don't think I could be where I'm at without my dad, whether mm. it's what he did to me and how he treated me as a kid to how he treats me today. Mm. I think my dad has learned as well they always treated me as a soldier as a kid yeah. no matter how old I was I was treated like a grown man wow so uh but I think he's thinking I both needed it and both needed to grow mm. and definitely mine and his relationship is affects how I treat my two sons mm. not that my youngest son's old enough to treat any sort of ways you know three months but my oldest yeah. son is seven so like mm. you know I think about the ways my dad handled things and whether I can do that or can't do that or should or shouldn't uh, goes back to that learning lesson uh, you know something that I learned really quick in the, the military is you're going to learn from your boss or your leader or whoever no matter what whether it's mm. good or it's bad whether you want to be like them or you don't want to be like them things that yeah. you do that, do that you like and things that they do that you don't like so take a lot of, I mean some of the stuff they did to me, you know, the parents did to kids in the 90s and early mm. 2000s. You can't do the kids today. Today. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I still take a lot of the uh, psycholog uh, psychological aspect of what happened and try to apply it the best way I can to make sure my kids are disciplined. But no, I still love them. Yeah. But it's not okay to do what they did or whatever. Mm. I love it, bro. I, I love that, man. Let me ask you this, bro. And again, I want to thank you for your service. Um, just let me just definitely say that right now. Thank you so much for your service. And all of the other people I interviewed, thank you all for your service. Um, what you guys did and are doing, um, again, is something I think that you guys don't get a lot of recognition for. Um, and I actually want to touch on that a little bit, man. Do you feel as if 
people in the military get the respect and the recognition that they deserve do you do you even care about that and if and if so or if not do you feel like it's deserving yes and no Mm. Uh, like i said i come from the older army generation Mm. that was built for war and those guys don't want recognition mostly you know that's i'll thank you for your support Mm. a lot of guys think have done things um while they're overseas that Normal humanity are unspeakable, but it was life or death between them and another guy, or them and a battle buddy, or them and civilians. You know, it just they they don't get enough, but at the same time, most of them don't want it. Just leave them alone. Um, mm. They're still fighting their demons. Mm. It's not that they're able to forget; it's that they have them in a bottle, and mm. just the win for the day is keeping that bottle closed. I definitely see that in my dad all the time. Is that some days he just he's having a struggle just to keep that bottle closed. Yeah. You know, cap on the bottle. Yeah, yeah. So uh yes and no. I think some of these younger kids, nothing against them, but they're they take a little bit too much advantage of it. And not all of them. I've seen seen this mostly at trade off bases that are training soldiers. Um, usually in their AIT or their tech score or whatever A school yeah. the Navy thing calls it. Um, so, oh, look at me. I'm a soldier. Right. Thank you for my service. Right, right, right. Like, Calm down. You haven't done <laughs> anything with your career yet. <laughs> sit sit yeah. down. Right. Watch the old guys. Pay attention to what they do. Learn from them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that comes with everybody. They're they're proud of the uniform. I'm proud to put the uniform every time I do. Mm. Uh, still uh, in the military, I'm the Texas National Guard. Okay, yeah. I was just going to go into that. Okay. Still very proud. Every time I put my uniform and boots on, it's uh, awesome. not just patriotic. It's my family bleeds through this. You know, my mm. dad was in the military. His dad was in the military. Oh, wow. His great uh, uncle was in the military. My mom's dad was in the military. Wow. My mom's brother was in the Navy. Uh, my family just re- you know, bleeds red, white, and blue. We've always served wow. since 1776 or something. Like that. Bro, but, you my know. goodness. Man, that's... Bro, that's, that's... Uh, again, man, it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And again, to, to, to interview someone with your history and your background um, is, is unique. I've never had anyone with this unique of a background to where it, it, like you said that far back that's crazy you definitely bleed red white and blue like that's 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 crazy talking about however the the mental aspect that goes into the military again that was one of the reasons we hit each other up that was one of the biggest things we spoke on when we were dming and it was just going into that whole aspect of mental health and the military yeah do do, do you feel and again, I, I know some of the answers to these questions, but for the people that are watching uh, that would want to know Aaron's perspective, do you feel as though that's something that is heavily stressed as well as dealt with when it comes to the military? And if not, how do you think that it should be addressed? Or how do you feel, the, what do you feel the military should do or could do to help aid those, th- those, those who are struggling with those demons or those, or those you know, those, those, those demons in the closet that many people don't see uh, because of what happened overseas? Most of the people that need the help don't want it. Mm. And then most of, most of the people who don't need the help want something because of one event. You know, I'm not saying they don't deserve it, yeah. I'm telling, even in training, you go through some traumatic stuff that it, it, you know, that you the person you walk into basic training is not the person that walks out. Now the same person that walks out, your leadership or your drill sergeant or whoever didn't do the job. Uh. Um, but the people who need it the most don't want it. Um, a lot of Maple Fitness is not just based around the military, but also firefighters, law enforcement, medical and staff, uh, which is EMTs, first responders, mental health behind them. What are the help they getting? Everybody knows the mental health behind the military is it's pretty well known. It's no one takes it serious, but it's known. Yeah, you know, yeah. There are people who are willing to get you the help if you reach out. The hard part is getting the people to reach out, uh, which is why on my channels, if someone needs help, 
for whatever reason, he's a friend to talk to. Uh, always hit me up. I always want to wow. chat. I've lost friends to suicide. I've lost friends to war. I've lost friends to training incidents. It sucks. Um, I, I hate to say this, but I've had suicide thoughts. Yeah. Um, hasn't been for a long time, but yeah. you, just, you get to that depression and anxiety mm-hmm. where it, it, so I would I would never acted on it, obviously. Yeah. But, but it, I would never want another soldier, sailor, marine, or airman, or even a coastie, mm-hmm. or a law enforcement officer, firefighter, medical staff, first responder, to mm-hmm. ever feel that way. Yeah. They train you in all these services for the action. But what happens when you come home? Mm. How do you, you know, they train you to be these people at your job and prep for this job, but what do they do when you come home? Mm. Like a yeah. firefighter. Let's say this firefighter dragged eight bodies out of a burning house. Mm. Three of them are for kids. And he's got three or here has three kids at home. Mm-hmm. What are you supposed to do with that? Mm-hmm. Who's helping them? Or a police officer, a car accident happens and he's got a six year old kid at home and he's pulling a six year old dead body mm-hmm. out of the car. Or nurses, you know, nurses, the medical staff is mm-hmm. so hard with COVID. They got families to go back home to. So the military is where I come from, but I would like to help all service members uh, all across the board. And be able to not just tell them I support them or donate to some organization, but be able to go out in their area and find somebody that's cheap mm. for their medical uh, insurance or it's free for them. Yeah. They can, because I've been, um, a lot of people don't know this unless you're directly friends with me. I went to anger management multiple times since I was that. Mm. I'm not going to go into why, but I've been, I've had to sit and talk to a counselor. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I didn't understand how helpful it was until yes. I got into certain situations where yes. I was a little bit older, how helpful some of those conversations were. I was able uh-huh. to direct my energy instead of to anger to something else. Okay, how can I, instead of escalating the situation, how can I de-escalate mm-hmm. the situation? Yeah. I, if I can learn, and anybody can learn, because I, I am not the brightest apple in the tree. Yeah. But I'm willing to help the brightest apple on the tree get where they need to go to become the brightest tree mm. in their plot of land. Weird metaphor, but <laughs> hey, nah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna, I wanna help. I have friends who are firefighters and cops and uh, nurses and doctors and everybody. As much as this mental health issue crisis is going on in the nation everyone's worried about everybody else except the people who need it most mm. so the service members of this country wow. who see death every day yeah. who deal with dangerous situations who get hurt who's who's helping them when they get home i've actually um one of my business partners or my business partner to a different company, which we are still in the works on. John mm. Ali, he mm. uh, is a sergeant in the Army Reserve. He is wow. also all about this. He and I connected at a school about what happens to the fight home. That's what he and I are trying to work on getting up and going. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to let him control that. As it was, he and I came up with the idea, but it was his idea of the company so obviously i'm gonna let him control it i'm gonna yeah. get it off the ground but i mean it's it's based around the same thing what happens when we come home you know you got these um sir, you know army military service members who came home from 18 to 20 some months mm-hmm. in war i'm okay. supposed to come home and act like it never happened i never saw somebody right. get blown up or their best friend mm-hmm. getting shot in the head or mm-hmm. you know they don't i don't think about that the military is bad about trying to re civilize us especially after i've been in a long time mm. that seems to think they don't so you know they can you can treat you can teach anybody to be a soldier you can right. teach a monkey or uh, anything with a simple brain to be right. a soldier and go yeah. kill or take over or dominate something you can't teach them to be civilized after mm. that or how or, or come up with a solution to do that so that's mm. the company's mayfield fitness is about yeah um, obviously on top of fitness and my family and, and trying to just bring joy to people's lives mm-hmm. live laugh have some fun yeah new people bro 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 that that is uh, again i love what you're doing again your company being something that guys you definitely should go over and follow and support um you know again we'll get into his social media and things of that nature but what you're doing and what you've already stated in terms of 
what your mission or your goal is behind your your brand and your company your companies um is i think outstanding outstanding to say the least um i think that you know again again agreeing with you 110 percent on the fact that you can teach anyone to go and conquer or dominate or destroy something but to to teach someone how to reintegrate into society you know that is something that you just can't especially after experiencing those things again i could never understand how that feels because i've never been through it but for someone who has like yourself been through things like that how you know not to not focus on that part I would say maybe even more than the part of training the person to go into, to not focus on that part or give that much more, if not more emphasis on that. It's almost like, what do you, you know, I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but why do you think that is? Why do you think the military doesn't focus on it? Do you, do you just feel like it's just a lack of, uh, a lack of empathy 